What's up everybody, it's David and in this video I want to just talk to you about why you should probably stop using keyword tools and what you should do instead, particularly if you're an individual. Now, keyword tools absolutely have their place and I would never make a statement like there you should stop using them, they're terrible, they don't work. No, 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 they, they have their place but in this video I want to explain to them, explain to you how they work and like what purchase decisions should go into like deciding like what tool to get and even even if you need a tool. And to be honest with you, like the majority of the way I find keywords and phrases don't even require a like don't require a tool. So basically, I wrote a post on Website Create Pro, uh, a resource page, part of the resource page on the best SEO tools available right now. And the ones I ranked are KW Finder, Uber Suggest, uh, Hrefs, and SCMrush. And each of these tools is a little bit different. I think the ones that are most helpful are Ahrefs and SCMrush, but those are quite expensive at around $100 a month now. Um, unlike web hosting, this is something that you could probably just get for like one month and then collect a bunch of actionable data on your competitors. Now, what's the difference between Ahrefs and SEMrush? That's a really big one I always, I'm always asked. Like the, the difference primarily is that SEMrush is more focused on keywords and rankings and Ahrefs is more focused on like backlink profiles. But again, they're both like a suite of tools. They both can give you that information that you need to know like what are my competitors ranking for? That's the real value with these tools, particularly if you're blogging and trying to build a niche website and you want to know like what kind of content you should be creating. Like you can do competitive research and take a look at like the top five or 10 blogs in your niche, put them in, and then you can get a list of like pages that these websites are ranking for and getting traffic for. Now, again, the issue is like everything's always an estimate. So it's not like if it says like, oh, this is the search volume for this is 3,000. Everything's just an estimate, okay? So nobody knows for sure anymore. Back in the day, you were able to use like Keyword Planner and before that it was called the Keyword Tool and get like real data it was amazing. You were actually able to get data from Google about like how much people search for something like uh, how to tell if a guy likes you. Uh, that was searched for like 60,000 times a month. I had dating websites like what? How to tell if a guy likes you? Oh my goodness. And so I created a post on that and it made me thousands of dollars creating a piece of content and doing affiliate marketing for a related dating product. Now you can't do that anymore. Now it's like basically everything's an estimate. And so the really the, the main reason you should want to get like an Ahrefs account or an SEM rush is just because you can do competitive research. That's the primary benefit. And of the two, I think Ahrefs is definitely geared more towards SEOs. So if like you're working for an SEO agency and you have manage, managing the SEO for clients and the backlink profile and you know you have like you're trying to rank for like a really competitive phrase and you're like, oh, how is my competitor beating me for this phrase? Like, key, you know, that's where Ahrefs really shines, where they, they allow you to have that like really granular detail to like jump in and, and figure out the backlink profile and things like that about how a website's beating you. Uh, for bloggers and average people, I think SEMrush is a little bit better because it gives you uh, keyword data and specifically like uh, long-term keyword data where you could like look over the months and years for a website's profile as well as you can take a look at uh, the various keywords and phrases that they are currently ranking on the first of Google for, which is like, look, if you can do that for a niche and then like you're looking at your competitors and saying, like, hey, they're ranking for this phrase, like, okay, I'll create a competitive phrase on that. I'll create a paid piece of content on that and go after that phrase as well. And that's one of my favorite ways to start almost any new website is just to do that competitive research and take a look at like the top five, 10 blogs in a niche that I want to enter and figure out like, okay, like, well, where are they getting their traffic from? What phrases? And then I'll like create a compile a list of like 30, 40, 50 pages. And that gives you so much time. And, and like, that gives you so much to work with about like what kind of content you should be creating. That's the real value of like uh, SEO tools. And that's basically how I approach SEO tools. Now, the other way that I actually always do the majority of the time that I, the majority, the tool that I use all the time to do keyword research is actually Google. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's free. It's like, and I'm going to show you right now, um, basically how to figure out like what keywords and phrases that you could potentially rank for and what kind of pieces of content to go after. Because um, particularly with the website, it's like, look, you got to think like you niche and then you got to think about like, what are people searching for and then create content that people are searching for. But really you also want to be creating content that Google also needs, if that makes sense. Like for example, like uh, website creative pro.com, for example, I'm in a really competitive niche. So like the blog posts I write are just like how to create a landing page, how to create a website, how to start a blog. Like that stuff is super duper competitive. Like you're not going to like rank on page one because you wrote a blog post on how to create a landing page or how to start a blog. 
Like with with a niche, that's the advantage of a niche website, and that's why I really like the niche website business because you can just go after like smaller phrases that people are searching for, but um, Google doesn't have a lot of content on, and that's really like the goal that we want to do. We want to find those phrases that we can combine into like really meaty posts. Like you want to have a mix of like good content where it, you're going after a bunch of different keywords and phrases, but you also want to be going after like uh, more long tail phrases that you know is Google actually like really needs content for. So and now we're just gonna jump into my laptop and I really wanna show you basically how I approach uh, doing keyword research and trying to find phrases and, and content to help you know your website rank and be useful to people and just make it a win-win for all. So anyways, let's jump into my laptop right now. Welcome to my laptop, let's begin. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, do me a favor and hit that like button. Uh, it's a small thing, but it really helps my channel get more exposure because Let's be honest, YouTube kind of hates my channel. Like I just, my videos get 50 views and then they die and they go into YouTube oblivion. So hopefully hitting the like button will rescue them from YouTube oblivion so people can actually get value out of this. Cause it is frustrating getting messages from people being like, hey man, nice video, it's so helpful. Wow, I can't believe your videos don't get more views. It's like, yeah, I know, I, I make the videos and I get, I'm equally frustrated by it. Anyways, let's jump into it. So uh, let's just do quickly robot lawn mower. And now I'm using a plugin for Google uh, Chrome, which is related keywords. Um, I gotta add this to the list as well, I forgot about it. Uh, keywords, it's called Keywords Everywhere. It's just a Chrome extension and it gives you just a quick little estimate. Again, estimate, okay? It says volume 16 heart. That doesn't actually mean 16 heart. It just means like this is something that people are looking for. So basically, two ways you can use Google is to type in the phrase and then take a quick look at like what's coming down here because this is what is being recommended. These are actually phrases that people are searching for in addition to Robot Lomor. And you can also come down there for keywords that you can incorporate into a potential blog post. And right here in the middle, you can do the same. And you could also do this with YouTube. You can type in a phrase and see what fills in. And you can take a look at like the most popular videos and that kind of gives you an idea of like potential content ideas. Uh, so this is one of my favorite ways in addition to SEM Rush. Like I, what I always do is with a brand new website, I do SEM Rush and I do competitive research and I create a long list of like 50 keywords that websites are actually ranking for and getting traffic to. And then it's like, okay, well, that's what I'm gonna go after. After that, then it's kind of like, you gotta figure it out yourself. And this is the process I like to take. So we do like robot lawnmower and then we go like best robotic lawnmower of 2018, best robotic lawnmower of 2019. Okay. so. There we go, that's a great phase. Best robotic lawnmower of 2019. But, and then we can also take a look at here, how much does a robot lawnmower cost? Like this, this alone could be its own phrase. So it's like the best robot lawnmowers. So this, this specific page has a quick little section about how much does a robot lawnmower cost, cost but it's not a dedicated page. So there you go. Like you could potentially, if you had a technology website or a website about like smart home technology, for example, you could totally create a post on like how much does a robot lawnmower cost or the best budget robot lawnmowers of 2019, something like that. And you know, the whole point of this is to find keywords and phrases that Google um, needs content for. That's really what we're kind of trying to do here. Like, yeah, you want to go after competitive phrases, but, um, just going after like robot lawnmower, like that's a very, very competitive, that's a competitive phrase. Like there's gonna be a lot of companies right there, like PC Mag, you're not gonna beat PC Mag with your brand new website. Uh, so it's like, like, and this is like, Google has enough content on this. Google, what they really need, is like they need more specific pieces of content on this. And so it's just, that's where the SEO tool comes in handy, like Ahrefs, for example, uh, because it can give you that actionable backend data on all these websites to see like where they're getting their links and like what that, but that's only if you like, you have a website that could be competitive towards something like a CNET or a PC Mag, like, but you don't with a brand new website or a blog, even a blog that's like two years old, like you're better off using something like SCM rush to find like competitive research and then just go through this process to find these longer tail phrases that you could create content on. Now I'm not for strictly just going after like long tail phrases either. Uh, it's important to answer questions. It's important to have long tail content like this, but it's also important to like combine stuff into like meaty posts that go after, uh, you know, some specific content. Like you could totally just like one, your one pillar content that you could create for your website could be like, uh, lawnmower, robot lawnmower, the ultimate guide. 
And then that's it. There you go. There's your authority post. And then you could also create these additional little pieces of content. Uh, so basically that's in a nutshell, a really high level overview uh, without getting into it in too much detail about how I approach like keyword research after I compile a bunch of data using SEM rush on my competitors. And so we we'll just take a look at the bottom there for searches related to robot lawnmower and take a look here for ideas and also just let the uh, search bar fill in with the search intent and then take an, a look at the websites and just, you know, kind of like use common sense a little bit and kind of look at like, okay, could I compete with this? Is this related to my site? Does this make sense? Because Google wants to rank brands as well. So you always want to be staying on topic related to your website. You don't want to be going off. Like if you're like robot lawnmowers, like this is a good topic for like a lawn care website or a website that's about like smart home technology, that sort of thing. It wouldn't be like, for example, if I was to write a post on robot lawnmowers on a website, create bro, it'd be like, what? It makes no sense if it could be going after that. Uh, phrase. So anyways, this is just a high level overview. So that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Um, leave a comment below about your favorite way to find keywords and phrases. I'm always curious to know. Um, anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you very much. Bye bye.